Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to go over setting up multiplayer in your project. Particularly we're going to go with a two player game, but adding the third and fourth player are just as easy as adding the second player. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are with our scene. We have a player one and a player two. If we go to the objects, we can see player one and player two accordingly. They do the same thing right now. But the one thing that we notice is that when we play them, I'm controlling them both with my keyboard at the same time. And now I'm going over to my controller and I'm controlling them both as well. So we need to differentiate which control type is for player one and which control type is for player two. So to begin setting up the multiplayer, you go to settings and project settings, and you can see right at the very top, you'll see number of players. Now you're also asked how many players would you want when you make a blank project, but just note that you can change it anytime in the project settings. Now, if you go to the pull down menu, you can see that you can choose from one to four players. So in this example, we're going to do two players. However, you can choose three or four accordingly. So now that two players is selected, we can go on to the next step, which is to assign objects to these players individually. And that is going to be in the player character management. So before we actually add these characters, I want to show you what this will allow us to do. So I'm going to click OK and save our two player setup here. We're going to go back to the scenes and we're going to see that right now these players are just the normal object. So the object that I created in here, all I did was I just selected them from the list and I plopped them into the scene. All right. So that is not a player character as far as a player one or a player two. How you get player one and player two is you actually do starting points. So by starting point, when you when you click on the starting point and put it in the scene, you can then over here select what player it is. And in this case, let's just say that this first one would be uh, player one. So we unselect a player two. Now, the thing is, is that nothing is showing up. There's no sprite or in this case object associated with it. So we need to change that for both player one and player two. Because if we were to put in a starting starting point right here and say this one's gonna be player two, then it also has no sprite. So let's change that and you go back to settings. And this time we can just jump straight to character or player character management. And now we can start assigning objects. So we can click on the first one and we can say, hey, we want the player one to be this player one character. And we'll hit okay on here. And then the player two, we want to be the player two. And again, we want it to select player two. We'll hit okay there. Now we have objects assigned according to the starting points. And when I, we hit okay, you will see that both the starting points now show appropriately. So now let's get into what exactly the starting point player assigned objects give us versus these normal objects that we're putting into the scene. So let's go to resource tab here and go to our variables. And right here, we can see that we have four controller ID variables. One is for player one, one is for second player, third player, and fourth player. All right, so these are where we assign our input controls to that individual player. Well, by player one, it is referring to that starting point that you're putting out there. So it's referring to the object that is being used right here in one player. And the only way to get that one player is by using a starting point. So I hope that that makes sense. You have to have the objects assigned to the first player, second player, and then you have to have the starting points showing that these are in fact the first player and the second player objects. Do note you can have multiple objects. So on different scenes, you can be using different second player objects, but just for now, we'll just use these ones. Okay, so now that we know that these are assigning the specific first, second, third, and fourth player controller IDs, let's go over what the IDs actually mean. All right, so you can see it's kind of gray, not sure if you can see it, but they all start out with a value of negative one. All right, and a negative one is a auto assigned value. So what's going to happen is, is the first input that's put, it's going to grab what kind of a controller that's coming from, whether it's the keyboard, whether that is the first plugged in controller, whether it's the second plugged in controller of your PC and so on. So a negative one is going to grab the value auto and it's going to assign it. So for instance, let's show this off a little bit. And I'm going to keep the scene as it is with the two normal objects and the two starting point. So when I press play test here, you know, we'll load up here. 
And okay, so I'm going to move with my keyboard first. All right, so I move with my keyboard first. Now you can see that these normal objects are just taking the input and that's because they don't have a controller ID associated with them. But now that we have the starting point player one, and remember, they're both right now set to negative one value. So the first player controller ID is negative one and the second player controller ID is negative one. So because I pressed input on the keyboard first, the first player, because it does go in order. So if both first player and second player are negative one, the first player will take the first input pressed. All right, so in this case, since I did do the keyboard first, the uh, player one takes control of the keyboard. So now the keyboard only can control player one. So now I'm going to go and press my controller. And now you can see that the controller, the negative one that was here, and matter of fact, let's pop up the debug menu here and go to object group data. And we can see that we have, these are the normal players. And then here are the starting points. All right, so starting point one, which is player one. And if we scroll down to controller ID, we'll see that it took a value of zero. Now I haven't talked about the other values, but the value of zero is the keyboard value. So because of that first input press, it took zero and now keyboard only will control this object. Now let's go down to the starting point two and scroll down to the controller ID right here. And it took a value of one. And the value of one is the first plugged in controller, which is exactly what happened. So now the controller will control player two and the keyboard controls player one. You can see that we can't get that effect with these normal objects. So that is the power of the starting points and the controller IDs. I wanted to show one more example on the negative one values just because it wasn't super clear, but you can see that both the starting point one and starting point two start off with the negative one. All right. So the last time I said that player one took the keyboard input first, and then when I press the controller, player two took the controller input. This time I'm going to show you that player one will now take the controller input if I press that one first. So you can see that player one is negative one, player two is negative one. So when I press the controller, you'll watch that the controller ID changes. So here I press the controller and you can see that the controller ID on player one changed to one. So that's what I meant by negative one will auto assign and it goes according, it goes down the list. So player one will get the first input, player two will get the next input. So now if we go over to player two, which is still negative one, if I press the keyboard, which is what I'm going to use, you can see that now the player two gets assigned zero and now that becomes player two's input. So that's, I wanted to better visualize that process going on. Okay. So now that we have seen that it actually works, let's go over the values. So we saw that the negative one is an auto assign and that just took the first input in order. So first player and on, it takes the first input and it assigns that controller. Now we can also assign it with zero, which you saw with player one when I press the keyboard first, and zero will lock it to the keyboard only. And then you saw in player two, when I moved it with the controller, it assigned to controller one. Now I only have one controller, so that's all that I can get. But if I had more plugged in controllers, you would have a value of two, three, four, and so on. However, there's only four player, up to four players max, so really you would only have to worry about a controller ID value of one, two, and three. And they go by how the, the order of the plugged in controller. So whatever controller is plugged in first, that is going to be the one that is one. And then the next plugged in controller will be controller two. And then the third plugged in controller will be controller three. Speaking of values, one, two, three. All right. So now let's say that you want to specifically set your controller ID, you don't want it to auto assign, but you can see that right here, you cannot assign a default value. So you can simply go to your objects and you can actually create a setup object or a setup action here. So we'll just call this one setup. It doesn't really have to do much, but we do need to make it the default action. I'm just going to give it a, a motion so that we can see it in the scene. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to set the switch and variable. We're going to choose the common, and then we're going to choose the 
this one is player two. So we're gonna choose the second player controller ID and we're going to hard set it. And in this case, I want the second player to use the keyboard. And so I'm going to choose zero, a value of zero. Now I'm gonna make sure that it unconditionally goes to the first state, which is waiting. And then I'll go to player one and do the same thing. This time I'll just copy it. I'll say setup, add a link unconditionally. And then the only thing that we're gonna do is we're going to change the common uh, player one controller ID this time. And this time I'm going to assign it to the controller. So I'm gonna hard set it to one. I'm gonna hit okay there. And I'm gonna go to the scene and actually delete these um, objects. We don't need those examples anymore. And we will hit play test. And when it loads, we can see that now when I move the keyboard, I'm player two. And when I move the controller, I'm player one. And everything works accordingly. Does I can't remember what, there we go. Uh, yeah, so that is how you set up the multiple controllers for your different players and how to hard set them if you if that's what you were wanting. And so I hope this video helped. Hope it made sense. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Visit the Discord or the Steam forms and we'll get you figured out. And with that, we'll see you at the next video.